Oh, here from the Marina Variety Restaurant at 17 Lockwood Do Drive in downtown Charleston with you until 8 tonight to talk with the head coach Brent Thompson of the Citadel Bulldogs discussing uh, the big win this past week against VMI, getting ready for another rivalry game coming up Saturday at home uh, against Furman. And uh, also we'll take any questions that you have if you tweet using the hashtag AskCoachThompson online. Appreciate you joining us on the radio, uh, online through YouTube, or even here in person at the restaurant here every Wednesday 7 to 8 during the season. Coach, how are you tonight? A lot better than I was last week, and a lot better than I was the week before that. So, uh, we're doing uh, we're doing fairly well. We're uh, we're getting back on track, hopefully. Absolutely, and the Bulldogs coming off that 34-32 win Saturday on the road against VMI in the Military Classic of the South, 12th straight win against uh, VMI. And you know, I talked to you earlier in the week. I asked you then, but you know, have you been able to to calm down a bit since that win Saturday? It was a wild game. Yeah, you don't have a whole lot of time to even celebrate that one because it's a seven-hour trip home. Uh, we got in at about 1.30, and then uh, we certainly we're back at it on Sunday morning uh, at about 10.30, 11 o'clock. We get back into the office. So uh, it's a quick turnaround. It's a quick turnaround for our players, but um, it's certainly we've got to get done what we've got to get done, and we've got to prepare for Furman. It was a heck of a game to, to watch as a fan and certainly to broadcast for myself. And I've got on top of it all, the Bulldogs come out with a victory. But that game in just 60 minutes had a little bit of everything. It certainly did. As it was an interesting ball game. There was a lot of uh, just some strange things that went on on both sides, something that you don't see all the time in football games. And uh, that happens with rivalry games. And that happens when you go on the road a little bit as well. Uh, they're going to put everything that they've got into it. And it's a fairly uh, kind of the way those, those games go with them up there at VMI. They're going to put everything they've got on the line and try to beat you and uh, we've got to certainly uh, do our fair share to, in order just to win the game. And the Silver Shaco uh, Trophy coming back to Charleston. It's been here since 2003. Now 12 straight wins in the rivalry. How did the trophy make its trip back to Charleston? Was it with you? No, I, I stuck it on the equipment truck. Uh, they have an extra seat. Is uh, There's not enough room sitting next to me right now. And I don't think uh, Mr. Andy Clausen would want it next to him. So it got passed on to the equipment truck. But certainly nice to bring that back here to campus and put it where it's been now for about 16 years. Yeah, we've got to get it uh, probably replated here soon. And uh, we'll probably get that done here in the off season and then uh, we've got to get the engraving done as well and uh, add another year to that and put that back on display for us. The win in a rivalry setting with the Military Classic of the South beating VMI and then also the second win of the year with both wins coming in conference. So just overall, how important of a victory was that for the players and the program? Well, I think it was. It, it's always an important win just to beat those guys because it, it is our rival and it is a, a similar school and there are some bragging rights in there. And uh, it is something that we've taken pride in, the fact that we have had it for the last 12 years. And uh, it's something that uh, I think means a lot to everybody involved in the game. And it was one of those close victories, as mentioned, 34-32, came down to essentially the final play of the game, quite literally. And uh, a game that, you know, throughout the early parts of the season, we've discussed it week to week that a lot of close losses where a couple of plays maybe didn't go your way and those could have changed the outcome. Well, here on Saturday, a close victory and some of those plays did go your way, so I'm sure it's nice to see the Bulldogs pull out of a win like that. Yeah, VMI's had a couple of those those games as well. They've had some pretty close games and uh, we certainly have, our, have had our fair share. It was nice to be on that side of it. Uh, but, you know, we felt good about it. We felt good that we were uh, the leading for most of the game. You know, they were playing catch-up. They, we, they were in our spot where they were trying to come from behind and to their credit, they never gave up. They had a great plan together and they were able to score some touchdowns at the end to, uh, to put it to a two-point ball game. And then they went for that two-point conversion, of course, to try to tie it in uh, the closing 90 seconds. Uh, they were unsuccessful, leading to the 34-32 victory, but just take us through that two-point try because the Citadel, you and your players, able to come up with the big stop to pull off the win. Well, if you would have saw that, all we really wanted to do was we were sitting on a timeout, and uh, I was trying to get a timeout off, and I don't know if the crowds on both sides were so loud mm -hmm. that the officials couldn't hear it, uh, but it was actually the second time that I tried to get a timeout, I couldn't get one off. Uh, if you remember in the first half when we kicked the field goal, we were running out of time. Uh, somehow we did get the snap off. We did kick it and we did make it. So good thing on both occasions. Uh, strange things that happened and that's one of them is you're trying to get timeouts called. You don't know if you would have made the next kick or not and then you don't know if the two-point conversion was going to be uh, no good or not. You give them another chance at the two-point conversion. So uh, both, both cases were very interesting. I was just trying to get a timeout to see what the formation was going to be and couldn't get one off. And overall throughout the game, uh, some big plays made by specifically the defense, but also special teams. I mean, you force three turnovers, and then on special teams you have two blocks. You know, we saw a blocked punt earlier this year, but another one on Saturday and the first blocked extra point in two years for the Bulldogs. So uh, factor that in with the three turnovers, some big plays made by your guys. 
and, and probably what the game changer really. Mm -hmm. And uh, the special teams blocks were huge. Obviously, the uh, the blocked kick made him go for two twice, which is always difficult to get. Uh, the blocked field goal there, and then of course the the blocked punt gets us in uh, inside the red zone, inside the five yard line. We've got two or three plays to get the ball in the end zone, and uh, we were certainly able to do that. So that certainly helps. Um, we had one special teams mistake where we tried the uh, the trick kick, and mm -hmm. we're trying to uh, uh, kick pass. We call it, and we're just trying to get to get him on the edge and outflank him a little bit. We just choose to kick a little bit too far out of bounds. I thought we had a good chance at it, and uh, trying to play aggressive when we're on the road like that. We want to make sure that we're playing aggressive aggressive and trying to get an extra possession out of the game. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go so well. We give them the ball at the 50-yard line. They go down and tie the game up. But, um, you know, we're able to recover from there. I was going to ask you about that because we saw it from both sides. I mean, the aggressive nature throughout that game, uh, a lot of fourth down plays, not a whole lot of punts, the kick, the two-point conversions for VMI. At one point, of course, they needed to go for two. But uh, from both sides in a game like that, a whole lot of aggressive uh, play calling and coaching from you and your counterpart. You know, we, we sat in here last week and we said, you know, we've sat back the last couple of years against them and just try to absorb everything that they've been taking and uh, that they've been given to us. They've been, you know, trick playing us and they've been doing all, all sorts of different trick kicks and everything trying to fake punt. So uh, this year we were going to be on the opposite end of it. We were going to go for blocks. We were going to uh, take some shots down the field. We were going to try the the, you know the kick pass and uh, just try to do everything that we could to ju just be on the attack all the time and change our mentality going into the game because I never thought that we uh, approached that game the, appro the appropriate way. We never approached it as a true rivalry. We never approached it as hey we're going to be the aggressor in the game uh, and that's what we were trying to do as a staff. All in all even with that, that the kick didn't work out but all in all I thought an another excellent day for special teams obviously the blocks and the Matt Campbell the freshman punter who I've brought up a lot on this show throughout the season. Uh, four punts Three of them put inside the opponent's 20. One of them was over 50 yards. He averaged about 45 yards per kick. He had another good Saturday. He certainly did. I mean, he's, he's a weapon. And we've been going for it on fourth down, but we, we could just as easily kick and try to play some field position as two with him. Uh, he's done a great job. And then the other kicker, Jacob Godak, had that first miss to start the year against Chattanooga. But since then, knock on wood, he's been perfect. Five straight makes. He's been a changed player, really, since that miss. He's Whatever it was that was going on, he's fixed it. Uh, even today in practice, he, he I think he hit down a 40, 44-yarder today, 45-yarder today, uh, into, the, into, into the wind. I thought he had a, a great day, and uh, he's been a weapon for us. And I'm glad to see that he's gotten his confidence back because he really, truly is a good kicker. Yeah, have you noticed the biggest difference from last year to this season in the results? Has it just been something as simple as his confidence? I, I think so. And uh, you go back, I think he missed four or five in the VMI game last year. And uh, that was a little bit of a rough game for him. And ever since then, I think he's starting to battle his way back. Uh, I asked you earlier in the week, but I'll ask you again here for a different audience. What was more thrilling for you, the victory, the final seconds ticking off the clock, or getting picked up by uh, General Walters there when the, the game I was think over? Certainly getting picked up by General Walters because I knew um, one of the first things that he ever said to me when we met uh, way back in August, I think he was uh, strolling out onto the practice field one day, uh, caught us a little bit by surprise, and uh, I almost just about guaranteed him a victory against VMI. Uh, and then after I thought about what I said, I said, man, I just put myself out there like, like that. So I, I think he's got some buddies that he worked with at the Pentagon that were that are VMI guys. So he wanted some bragging rights. So I knew that it was going to be an important ball game for him, which then made it a very important ball game for me. Uh, I had to back up what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> and you certainly did. 34-32 victory Saturday against VMI. 12th straight win in this rivalry for the Bulldogs. And uh, we had him on the, right before our kickoff, he joined Jay on the sideline on our radio broadcast and certainly was fired up. But it was just a cool scene to not only see him there, but the freshmen in the stands and a lot of other members of that sideline in the decorated uniforms. A lot of support on Saturday for you and the team. I tell you what, it is, I didn't realize pregame that I, their their core was out there. Our freshmen were out there. It was a really a neat picture that I did see there. So um, it, it really puts everything into perspective about the game when you have both of the cores there. Uh, the support for the football game that's going on out there on both sides. It was parents weekend for them. Uh, they had one of the best crowds that I've ever seen there. Uh, we had a tremendous crowd with not only our, our, our freshmen there, but all of the, our, our alumni that come out for that game. And uh, certainly we were very appreciative of Captain Peluso and what he's done because it's not an easy thing to uh, mobilize 400 people, put them up overnight, mm -hmm. feed them, get them up there, get them in the right uniform, get them to march on there, um, and, and have them be as excited as they were because there was a lot of back and forth going on. Uh, I can hear it out of my open ear right there. I can hear the, the shouting that was going on back and forth, and uh, it really makes that game a special game. Uh, I would really love to have VMI come down and experience on our end. If, if we can ever get that done, that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. My first experience in this rivalry, and it was a, a tremendous atmosphere Saturday uh, up in Lexington. 
Lexington. We were the Bulldogs pulled off a win. Not only a sellout crowd, but you know there are fans outside of the stadium sitting on like a berm, just looking in like almost Wrigley Field, trying to see from afar. Uh, a great atmosphere, and and I guess that makes it an even better win for you because you went into a bit of a hostile environment and you pulled out the W. Yeah, we we really like enjoy those kind of environments. You know, uh, everywhere you go, it's fairly unique. You, know, you even go to like Florida State and those places uh, mm -hmm. and getting tomahawk chopped on the way in. It's kind of neat. You know, they may not like it, but it's it, it's kind of neat to see. I guess we'll see what Alabama has then. <laughs> no, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, we'll definitely see that. <laughs> so uh, the win Saturday in the rivalry with VMI, and now another rivalry coming up here this Saturday against Furman, and we'll dive deeper into it throughout the show and the particular matchup on the field. But, you know, no no rest for the weary here. You play one important game, and they're all important, of course, but, you know, one rivalry game, and it leads right into another now Saturday at home. Yeah, this is a big one for us for a lot of reasons, and I told our players that just today is uh, we, we certainly have got a lot to play for. Uh, we've certainly got a lot to play for. For especially in this game, not just for the rivalry of it, but for a little bit of redemption, and uh, not necessarily anything that they did. It's just the the more uh, the way that we handled the game last year, we we weren't pleased with. Uh, I certainly wasn't pleased with it, and uh, I don't think any of the players were either. And we'll dive into that a little bit later as well. But has practice been any different this week? You know, you come off that dramatic victory against VMI, a big win. You bring the trophy back home. Now you have another rivalry against Furman. Are the guys any more fired up this week? Because uh, it's unique to have a week in between two rivalry games like this. Yeah, well, you know, we've. Uh, I thought Sunday was a good practice. We came back went ready to work after a uh, a short turnaround, really coming off of a one o'clock getting in. Uh, from uh, from Saturday morning mm -hmm. or Sunday or Sunday morning, uh, I thought that uh, we had a good good Sunday practice. Had Monday off and came back Tuesday ready to go, and uh, had two really spirited practices. Now we still got some work to do to clean up tomorrow, but uh, I think we're almost getting to the point where we're ready to play. The Bulldogs back home this Saturday against Furman in a big rivalry game, uh, 2 o'clock kickoff at Johnson Haig Good Stadium. And uh, later on the show, we'll break into that matchup a little bit deeper, talk not only about the rivalry, but how the Bulldogs match up with Furman. When we come back, we're going to further discuss the win on Saturday against VMI, 12th straight victory for the Citadel in the Military Classic of the South, and a big victory for Coach Thompson and the Bulldogs. Here until 8 at the Marina Variety Store Restaurant at 17 Lockwood Drive. You can come join us every Wednesday throughout the football season. Great views, great food, and uh, great times on Wednesdays talking Bulldogs football. You can uh, participate if you're watching at home or listening on your radio at home or anywhere you are. Ask your questions online on Twitter using the hashtag AskCoachThompson and we will include those throughout the show. Time for our first break here on the Coach's Show with the head coach Brent Thompson. We'll be back and talk uh, more about the VMI victory for the Bulldogs this past Saturday here on ESPN Radio 94.7 FM and 9.10 AM. Bulldog fans, I'm Danielle Hensley, back this week for your Bulldog Breakdown. Men's cross country took 13th place at the Sand Shark Invitational last weekend. Colin Martin led the dogs for the fourth consecutive race with the 25th place overall finish. Sophomore Amber Opp paced the women for the fourth race in a row, finishing 25th overall, leading the team to a 14th place finish. This Saturday, both teams will be competing in the SOCON Championships in Cullowee, North Carolina. The Bulldog football team is coming off of a 34-32 win against VMI last weekend. Jordan Black became the third Bulldog to have a 100-yard rushing performance by running for 155 yards and two touchdowns. This weekend, the dogs are back at home for military appreciation, playing host to Furman at 2 p.m., presented by Apex. The mixed rifle team finished third behind fourth-ranked TCU at number 23 Georgia Southern Saturday afternoon. Senior Allison Otten led the way for the Bulldogs with an 11.38 aggregate score, the eighth-best aggregate score on the day. They will face the Eagles once again this Saturday at Georgia Southern. After falling 3-0 to Western Carolina on Friday, women's soccer came back and beat ETSU 2-1 in double overtime on Sunday. With just five minutes left, sophomore Hannah Roth scored the game-winning goal off of an assist from Kessie Bradshaw. The Dogs will face number 8 seed Wofford College to fight to advance to the quarterfinals on Wednesday at 7 p.m. on the SOCON Digital Network. The Bulldog volleyball team is coming off of two 0-3 losses against Western Carolina and UNCG last week. This weekend, they will host Furman on Friday at 6 p.m. and Wofford on Saturday at 7 p.m. They will then take a break from conference play to host Savannah State on Tuesday, first serve at 6 p.m. Rounding us out this week, women's golf will compete at the Terrier Intercollegiate this Monday and Tuesday at Wofford College. And that is your Bulldog Breakdown. Follow Siddle Sports for all things Siddle Athletics. I'm Danielle Hensley. Have a great week and go dogs.
pizza with Pepsi. Delicious. Style. Selection. Service. Quality. Value. See what everyone is talking about. Ashley Furniture Home Store. TD Bank's new intern, Bart, is one of those robots from another bank. We're training him to bank human. Uh, uh, Bart, why are you winding the clock back? The clock stated 11.35 p.m., but they are still working. The clock is fine. Our live customer service is available all night, and all day for that matter. He's learning. At TD Bank, we do things differently. Hello? Like live customer service. Hello? 24-7. Don't just bank, bank human. We build our communities. We earn our success. We, as South Carolinians, work best together. Don't follow your bank into the impersonal world of mergers. Make a change. Visit South Atlantic Bank to talk with local bankers who care about the low country. Our local headquarters will be ready next year on Johnny Dodds Boulevard. Until then, stop by our current location. You'll find a community bank with a proven track record of financial success. South Atlantic Bank, people you know and trust. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Back on the Coach's Show, the head coach Brent Thompson of the Citadel Bulldogs here from the Marina Variety Store and Restaurant at 17 Lockwood Drive in downtown Charleston with you until 8 o'clock talking about uh, Citadel football, the big victory this past weekend at VMI and getting ready for uh, an equally as big contest upcoming on Saturday at home against Furman. Uh, for those uh, listening at home or or um, watching on YouTube, you can participate, send your questions using the hashtag AskCoachThompson, and we'll get those on the air throughout the hour, Talking, uh, going back to the VMI game. First, before we get back into the VMI, coach, uh, the VMI game, Coach, I just wanted to uh, ask you about a, a certain topic because a big talk in the NFL, at least this week, has been analytics in the NFL with the New York Giants going for two the other night against the Falcons, and it's been a whole drama, and you have the old school who are against the analytics and the new school who are so based into numbers. Uh, working in minor league baseball, that's where analytics was really big, and now it's kind of crept into football, it seems, of late. My question being, for the Citadel and for you, how much do you use analytics, if at all, in your preparation or your game plans uh, week to week? We use quite a bit on defense. Uh, I would say more on defense. It's more relevant on defense. Offensive coordinators, uh, they're going to do what they do. And uh, from game to game, they're going to have their, their calls. And, I, and I'm sure we, we have our calls on offense uh, that we like to go to in, in certain situations. And uh, typically what I do is I do have somebody that breaks us down with that in mind. Uh, however, there, there are just certain plays that you feel comfortable with. There are certain times that you like the ball in certain people's hands. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are certain times where you just want to line up and say, you know what, stop it. And uh, that's football to me. But on the offensive side, because of what you do is so unique, uh, you don't get a whole lot into analytics. Is um, Against guys that you've seen from year in and year out, you may be able to do it against yourself a little bit more. Uh, but we don't get a whole lot of different defenses. We don't get a whole lot of blitzing. Uh, we don't get a whole lot of uh, you know different scenarios. They're going to line up and play what they play. Um, and that's what I like about the offense is we're going to do what we do. They're going to do what they do. And it's, it's, it's us against them. So let's get back into that game against uh, VMI with the win on Saturday, uh, 30. 34-32 beating VMI in the latest edition of the Military Classic of the South. 74th meeting between these two programs. First met all the way back in 1920. And on Saturday, the win, and it was a matchup where uh, both teams really did what we were expecting. You know, to quote Dennis Green, they are who we thought they were. You know, VMI came out, they threw it all over the place. You That's guys right. came out, you kept it on the ground. And so I guess from that perspective, maybe no surprises there on how the two teams handled it offensively. No, you know, I, I thought the game played out exactly the way you thought it was going to play out they um th- you know they play a good solid defense and they're going to throw the run on, throw the ball around on offense they're going to get their points they're going to move the football which i think they're doing a good job of they found a rhythm they found a, an offense that works for them and uh very similar to a sanford like we talked about is it's a dink and dunk kind of an offense they're going to uh short short passes short passes and then they're going to take their shots down the field and uh what happens is if you just miss a miss a guy in open space he can go and uh, that happened to us a couple times 
And I think the casual fan, they look at the numbers, they see VMI's lost 27 straight games um, and probably were surprised when going into that game they saw the performance from the quarterback, but that's what he's been doing all year. What did you think of that quarterback? Because he had another good game on Saturday. Uh, very efficient. You know, he's a um, more of a product of the system, I think, but the good thing is, is they have a system, uh, and they've got a system that works and a system that they believe in, which I think is what they were lacking the last couple of years. They didn't know if they were going to try to be a pro team. They would, didn't know if they were going to try to be a, a zone run team. They didn't know if they were going to try to be a, a power gap kind of a team. And then finally in the fourth year, I think they found the system. They hired a new offensive coordinator. Uh, it works for them. They've got some, you know, they're going to get the ball out of their hands pretty quickly, so they don't need a um, tremendous offensive line. And most of the time, the offensive line sits and doesn't block anybody because they rush three guys. Um, unless you're kind of blitzing them, they don't, they don't have a whole lot to do. Uh, and then they're going to get the, uh, the wide receivers, and they're going to find ways to get different guys open, and they know where their reads are, and you've got to cover the field. Yeah, you kind of touched on it. Their, their objective seemed to be get guys in open space and make you have to you know, come up and make a tackle. How do you think your defense handled those open field tackles and all the quick passes to the receivers? You know, I thought we handled them overall very well in the first half. Mm -hmm. uh, the second half is when they started to push the ball down the field and they felt like they uh, needed to get big plays. They got big plays. They got one at the end of the uh, at the end of the first half there where they were they got us in space and they were able to do that. And uh, and then they got one, of course, that, that scored to tie the game. But oh give them a chance to tie the game up we're missing just open field tackles and that's what it comes down to we overrun it we don't break down we don't we don't run through our tackles right there uh, we're in spots you know we're in the right we're going in the right direction to just we were able to get the guys on the ground and even though a lot of quick throws throughout the game it seems like uh, the Bulldogs were able to get some good pressure on that quarterback throughout for for the most part we did. We, we've got a few sacks, which was nice. We've got some, you know, tackles tackles for loss. We've got some. Uh, the thing you got to be careful against those guys is, of, of course, getting the ball out of his hands quickly, but also the screen game. And that was one thing that was concerning on the sideline is, we, you know, if we do pressure here, uh, is there a chance they throw the screen? And, and, you know, when the screen goes against the pressure, it's, it's tough. And, and, you know, last couple of weeks defensively, it seems like a different guy stepping up and somebody doing some things that we haven't seen from them before. In this past week, I would say maybe that was Mason Kinsey who had uh, his first two sacks on Saturday and made a couple of nice plays in the backfield. You know, he's great. Get, he's, he's one of our best pass rushers, and he's only a freshman, which is nice. He's come along. He's been developing. He's. Uh, 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 we were just talking. I was just talking to Coach Harrell about him today on our run, and he was. Uh, he's definitely a bright spot. He's been uh, a surprise to us. The fact that he can pick it up and handle it. Uh, he's kind of what you get out of Texas, a very polished football player. Um, he put a lot of weight on in the offseason, and I think he's put himself in shape to be able to play in a, uh, in a college football game for a season. Let's transi transition to the offensive side of things. You know, Jordan Black only threw it seven times, but he was your leading rusher. He had a career-long 71-yard touchdown run. He had about 150 yards overall on the ground. Uh, he had a pretty good day with, with the ball in his hands, it seems. Yeah, aside from the one turnover, mm -hmm. I think that was in, well, excuse me, two turnovers. He fumbled the one and threw the interception on the other one. Uh, I thought he had a pretty good day. He managed the offense fairly well. We gave him a few uh, adjustments to make in the second half, and he did that extremely well. But, uh, you know, there was a couple things that we started off the game throwing the ball and kind of that was part of the plan. We were trying to see exactly what they were going to give us because they don't give you the same defense year in and year out. They're going to give you some similar structure, but they're going to play it just a little bit differently until we can figure it out. Uh, we've got to put the ball in the air a little bit, and we've got to figure figure it out and kind of move the ball down the field, which the first drive went about the way it was planned to. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were completing balls. And uh, even the second drive, I thought we were doing a good job. We just dropped a couple of passes there that were uh, a little bit concerning. Once you drop a couple, you, you start to get into your uh, into your game plan mode of what you want to really do and run the football and try to you know hunt around and find out where you're going to be able to run the ball for the rest of the day. Yeah, the one mistake in the passing game that you mentioned was the interception late in the second quarter. Uh, just take us through that play and maybe what, what went wrong there. Well, we had about 16 seconds left in the half, and uh, it was going along with a lot of what we were talking about early mm -hmm. on, and that was we were going to be aggressive in right. the game. Uh, we were going to take our shot down the field, try to get out of bounds. We had a couple of timeouts left, try to get ourselves in the field goal range and see if we can't catch them slipping or sleeping on a, uh, on a particular route. Uh, the plan was was for the route was it was going to be a wheel ball down the sideline and uh, we were going to just kind of put it to the put it out of bounds or just kind of put you know see if he's wide open over there uh, just slightly under threw it we had a chance to get him open there if we threw it downfield a little bit more we had a chance to throw him open uh, under threw it 
picks it, and unfortunately, we got to make a tackle there, and, they, and we give them an opportunity to kick the field goal. Uh, on our side of things, it was nice that they didn't have any timeouts left, so they couldn't take a shot at the end zone necessarily, or it would be a long shot. So it was a long field goal. Uh, we ended up out of there with zero points given up, which was uh, a relief to us, of course. Uh, it could have been a bad situation if we uh, if we gave up the field goal. That would have been two scores, ten points, uh, in a matter of I mean, about probably I'd say about two and a half, three minutes of football. So um, we didn't do that. We went into halftime, regrouped ourselves, and uh, you know came out in the second half, played fairly well. Yeah, no harm, no foul on the scoreboard on that uh, that turnover. And you said going into the locker room and regroup, you came out, and then you know in the second half, specifically the third quarter, really stuck to the ground game. I don't think Jordan threw it again until the fourth quarter. Was that by design, or is that how the game dictated the play calling through that third quarter? Well, yeah, we made a couple of adjustments, and once we felt like we had the adjustments, we knew uh, that we could move the ball on the ground, and we knew that this was a pretty good plan moving forward. Uh, so we were giving him just a couple things to look at, a couple things to key on, and once he did, uh, he was able to do it just according and make the right and make the correct play calls in there and uh, we started getting the fullback the ball you know when you get the fullback the ball in our offense um, it makes us that much more productive yeah, and you ran again for over 350 yards I believe another good good day on the ground for the Bulldogs Saturday in that win against VMI 34-32 uh, you touched on uh, another point I was going to bring up about the opening drive touchdown which you've now done in back-to-back -back games coach McCombs I know asked you earlier about scripting the plays but what's been the difference for you these last couple of weeks where because we spent a lot of time early in the season talking about slow starts and now back-to-back -back weeks the offense has put together great drives to start going right down and getting a touchdown what's been the difference well it, it helps to uh, know what your offense is and what you can do and what you can be effective at and uh, you start to develop those things and you start to say okay we can you know move the ball a little bit in the air we're taking a little bit more shots we're being a little bit more aggressive in the ETSU game we took one down the field and we were able to uh, punch it in from about the four yard line in this game we drove it down the field and we were able to punch it in from about 20 25 yards out so that was nice uh, but we were able to keep them off balance with a little bit of the quick short passing game and we were able to keep them off balance with a run game and uh, give them some opportunities to move the ball down the field which uh, was it went about the way that it was supposed to go in the first drive and for the type of offense that you run, I imagine it makes a big difference when you are the team jumping out in front and playing with a lead as opposed to playing from behind. Yeah, certainly. It's a lot easier on us than playing from seven points behind you. And uh, you just keep telling yourself that don't panic. You know, you get the ball back here. Let's just drive the football. And uh, throughout the whole day, you want to make sure that you're not panicking, that you're driving the ball, and that you're just staying within your own game plan. Uh, you mentioned getting the uh, fullbacks involved in the second half. It looked like um, uh, Clay Harris was getting a lot of run in the first quarter at the be back position. Lorenzo Ward started to get into the rotation a little bit later on. Again, was that a situation where the, the, that's how the game played out, or was that by um, by plan? Uh, a little bit of both. And the, you know, the game played out where we were going to be able to move the ball inside a little bit more. Lorenzo's a pretty good inside runner, and uh, Clay was you know finding some pretty good seams in there, and especially on the first drive, I thought he hit some things that may not have been there. He had some really quick cuts in there, which was really nice to see. And, uh, you know, Lorenzo got in there, and when you really want to uh, kind of salt the game away and kill some clock and eat some time, he's the guy that we're going to go to, and we're going to try to pound the ball in between the tackles. Saw a couple of debuts in the backfield. A couple of freshmen back there didn't get a ton of touches, but they were on the field for uh, a handful of snaps uh, in the small amount of time. What did you think of a couple of your freshmen playing for the first time? You know, Nakim did a good job. Unfortunately, he did get a penalty on the holding call right there, but he was he was working his butt off to get the block done. Uh, but uh, Nakim was – it was – doing a good job at A-back for us, had some good assignments in there. He's going to play a little bit more this week and uh, so on and so forth throughout the rest of the year. You'll probably see him quite a bit. And then Amike Nwanze, uh, he's, he's been doing tremendous in practice. Um, he's got really, really quick feet. He's got a great vision in there. And uh, it was just a matter of kind of getting some comfortability in there for him. And, and I think he's going to see some more time here. Those are probably the two toughest names on the roster, so I appreciate you giving me like six weeks to, to get familiar <laughs> before I had to say those. Uh, on Saturday and now moving forward. Um, but I think I got them down. Um, other freshmen, again, you don't have to mention names, but um, is it the plan now this Saturday moving forward to continue to mix more freshmen in here the second half of the year? Yeah, I think we're getting to that point where we can is uh, we talked about it last week that you'd probably see a couple more names, and I knew those guys were coming out. Uh, so we had a pretty good grasp on that. But it's about that time is we probably played as many as we can possibly play on the uh, on the defensive side. On the offensive side, uh, we're getting to that point, too. We've played uh, – Kim and we've played uh, Amike so uh, those were probably the last two that you may see. Well all in all a great win on Saturday for the Bulldogs beating VMI up in Lexington 34-32 12th straight win in the military classic of the south between those two programs and uh, now getting ready for another rivalry game coming up Saturday uh, against Furman at home 2 o'clock kick at Johnson Haygood Stadium this 
Saturday. When we come back, uh, the second half of the program here will be spent getting ready for that game Saturday, talking about the matchup, the breakdown uh, with Furman, and another big game coming up for the Bulldogs. You can uh, participate. Send us your questions online using the hashtag AskCoachThompson. We're here until 8 o'clock at the Marina Variety Store Restaurant. It's the Coach's Show with the head coach, Brent Thompson, here on ESPN Radio 94.7 FM and 910 AM. We had long deployments in Iraq. Really grateful that USA was able to take care of my family while I was overseas serving. It was my very first car accident. We were hit from behind. I called USAA, and the first thing they asked was, are you okay? They always thank you for your service, which is nice because as a spouse, you serve too. We're the Hells, and we're USA members for life. See how much you could save with USAA by bundling your auto and home insurance. Get a quote today. Pizza with Pepsi. Delicious. Sorry, Dad. Sure, you could get him a new car. Sorry. You could also light a pile of money on fire. Sorry. Because as long as Mr. It Wasn't My Fault takes the wheel on occasion, maintaining this car is your best option. So keep it running longer, stronger, Sorry. with quality parts and a whole lot of Napa know-how. Dad, where are you going? These are the moments that move you. Roper St. Francis Orthopedics is South Carolina's leader when it comes to letting you stay in play. Our top-rated program has over 30 specialists across the low country who are ready to treat all of your moving parts. Call 727-DOCS to keep on moving. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. We had long deployments in Iraq. Really grateful that USA was able to take care of my family while I was overseas serving. It was my very first car accident. We were hit from behind. I called USAA, and the first thing they asked was, are you OK? They always thank you for your service, which is nice because as a spouse, you serve too. We're the Hells, and we're USA members for life. See how much you could save with USAA by bundling your auto and home insurance. Get a quote today. Pizza with Pepsi. Delicious. Sorry, Dad. Sure, you could get him a new car. Sorry. You could also light a pile of money on fire. Sorry. Because as long as Mr. It Wasn't My Fault takes the wheel on occasion, maintaining this car is your best option. So keep it running longer, stronger, Sorry. with quality parts and a whole lot of Napa know-how. Dad, where are you going? These are the moments that move you. Roper St. Francis Orthopedics is South Carolina's leader when it comes to letting you stay in play. Our top-rated program has over 30 specialists across the low country who are ready to treat all of your moving parts. Call 727-DOCS to keep on moving. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you.
Back on the Coaches Show, the head coach Brent Thompson here at the Marina Variety Store Restaurant located at 17 Lockwood Drive in downtown Charleston. We're here every Wednesday from 7 to 8 during the uh, football season. Appreciate those coming out to join us in person and also, of course, those listening on the radio or watching the online stream on YouTube. You can participate, sending in your questions on Twitter using uh, hashtag Ask Coach Thompson. We'll get to that in just a moment um, because a couple have rolled in and uh, keep continuing to send those questions on Twitter as we now turn our attention towards um, the Furman game coming here on Saturday. Two o'clock kick from Johnson Haygood Stadium, and so uh, coverage will begin at noon locally on 1021 FM, 921 FM, and 1450 AM here in Charleston if you can't make it to the game or if you're uh, looking for something to listen to while you're outside tailgating or inside Johnson Haygood Stadium for kickoff at two o'clock on Saturday. Coach, let's talk about the game coming up um, Saturday with Furman. They were picked to finish third in the conference in the preseason poll, and as we've already discussed this year, the preseason poll has kind of been flipped upside down here in the regular season in the SoCon, but Furman picked uh, in the top three in the conference. They're currently towards the bottom three. Have they been a surprise in terms of kind of underachieving to this point so far this year? Well, certainly compared to where they were last year, I thought they had a great year last year. He did a good job with what there and uh, like any other football team is they were senior laden they had uh, a really good running back they had a great quarterback that was there for four years um, maybe not built for the system but was very adequate for that system and then they had a, a center that was the Jacobs blocking trophy winner so on the offensive side alone I thought they had some really good players uh, defensively I think they've gotten better since last year they're very adequate on defense last year but this year a lot better than they were so um a little bit of a surprise, but yet when you're having to play some different guys in key positions like running back, quarterback, and some offensive linemen, uh, that can be very challenging. They lost a tight end. That was a good player. So, um, you know, that's why preseason polls don't mean a whole heck of a lot is uh, there certainly are um, things that you don't know that go on within a program uh, over the course of the summertime, which it's, it's going to affect you no matter what. Uh, it happens to everyone. It's happened to us. And uh, uh, we it's going to cycle out and it'll cycle back up again. Yeah, we saw it with Towson, a great example, where they get Flacco to come in. They were picked to finish like ninth in that conference. People didn't realize they'd have uh, such a talented quarterback rolling into that program, and, and we got a good look at him a couple of weeks back. Um, for the Bulldogs, with this matchup with Furman, you know, this is my first year, of course, with the program and all, but it depends on who you talk to and what they tell you in regards to who the biggest rivalry is, rivalry is for the Citadel. So for you, how do you see it coming off that game from uh, against VMI to now Furman? Is one a, a bigger rivalry for you than the other? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, this one has kind of crept up on me a little bit. It's kind of stuck in me a little bit uh, going back to last year. I think after last year, I, I could see it a little bit more mm -hmm. and uh, just a little bit of different atmosphere around this game than there was last year's game or the year before that against Furman. So, uh, yeah, we're starting to feel that a little bit, and it's getting into that Watford territory for me. Um, you know, you're so close. It's the, it's a back and forth with these guys. Uh, but with uh, with Furman, is it, it's, it's uh, a little bit of redemption right now. When you first uh, got here to the school, because now it's uh, it's been a few years, was it not until last season that you realized that there is a bit of a rivalry aspect between the Citadel and Furman, or was that something that first season you kind of realized? You know, when we first got here, we heard about it, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a couple of key wins. I think our first year we beat Furman there, and uh, we had a couple of key wins, and you start to put that out of your mind, and you start to move on to the other ones, and that's where, you, you know, you start game plan on Wofford, because those are the guys you hadn't beaten in 16 years. Right. And uh, so you get that win underneath your belt, and, and now you're starting to feel good about that one, and then uh, you win two consecutive games against Wofford, and you're starting to feel good about that one. And then things start to flip over. Uh, it's just a matter of really what the uh, you know what the previous year was like, what the previous couple of years, what the previous games were like. Mm -hmm. um, that start to you know as a coach, as a competitor inside of you, that's when they start to build as rivalries for you. Looking at this matchup with Furman, uh, when perusing the coaching staff, I know they have a couple of coaches from Air Force, which you know they run a similar type of offense um, to, to you guys, I would imagine. Um, but also coaching staff, uh, some guys on the defensive side that came from right down the road at Charleston Southern. So is there some familiarity there between their coaches and either your coaching staff or what you guys like to do here? Yeah, all too familiar. You know, we've got uh, we've got certainly two guys that are graduates of CSU on our staff. We have faced Coach Stagg uh, going all the way back to not just CSU. We faced him a couple years at North Greenville when we were at Lenore Ryan. Uh, I've seen him uh, probably at least um, of my nine years down here. I've probably seen him at least six or seven times. Uh, does a great job. Knows what he's doing there. Uh, is a heck of a football coach. He 
always has the defense ready to go, and it's very challenging for us. Uh, and really what it comes down to for us is we've got to win man-to-man -man matchups. Uh, we've got to be able to say, hey, uh, there's going to be times where we're just going to be mono and mono. We've got to win those matchups in order to win. In just general uh, terms here, when coaches are familiar with each other like that on opposite sides of the football, offense to defense, is there any sort of advantage to one side? Is it uh, a level playing field because you're both familiar with one another? How does that work? Yeah, fairly level, I would say, is there, um, you know, kind of we know what we're getting out of him. He knows what we're getting out of us, which is kind of nice. I mean, shoot, we're going to line down and play this thing. And uh, really whoever makes the most plays is going to be able to win the football game. And that's what I've been telling our players is uh, if we can go out and make some plays, we'll have a chance here. But um, it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very difficult on offense to move the football. And uh, we've got to be on our game and we've got to be technicians in what we're doing just as they are uh, pretty technical in what they do. I hate to bring up uh, bad memories, but you brought it up in your press conference uh, yesterday about last year's game with Furman, and you kind of touched on it moments ago, but you brought up that loss at Furman last year and how that um, may have been the, the biggest disappointment for you so far as a, as a head coach with the Bulldogs. Yeah, we just didn't show up, and uh, it was for the first time in my career that I had to walk across and say, you know, you kicked our butt today. Uh, congratulations. And that's, uh, I don't like to do that. I don't like to do that very often for sure uh, because of uh, the style of football that we play and uh, when you're not the more physical team out there and you've got to go across the field and admit that uh, I can you know that's that's a tough day for me looking at Furman and uh, the roster the numbers it looks like their starting quarterback was um, injured this past Saturday they used three different quarterbacks in that game they've used a couple of different guys do you have any sort of report on what to expect from Furman at the quarterback position come Saturday no we don't believe anything out there we're going to prepare for all three of them and uh, all three of them do something different very well uh, one's a great game manager and he's going to throw the ball extremely well well, uh, the next one's a little bit more dynamic with his feet, uh, maybe not as great of a thrower there. Uh, and then the third one's a little bit of combination of both, throws a little bit better, runs fairly well, manages the game okay. Uh, so it's it's going to be a crapshoot, and we're not going to find out until 2 o'clock on Saturday what it's going to look like. Does that present any sort of challenges for a defense to have to get ready for maybe three quarterbacks in one week? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It is uh, You've got to prepare for it all because you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, the one thing that you – they're going to be good in the run game. Uh, Coach <laughs> – Coach Hendricks is, a, is an offensive line guy, knows what he's doing. They're very fundamental on the offensive line. So you know they're going to try to run the football, but uh, the harder thing to defend with them is probably the pass game, being that they can find open receivers. Uh, they're going to get you playing one thing and overplaying one thing and uh, find out where your support is, and they're going to catch you in a play-action game with your eyes in the wrong spot. I believe behind their starting quarterback, the other two backups who both played on Saturday, or at least I've gotten in this year. They're both uh, freshmen, I believe, for Furman. One's a redshirt freshman. The other one's a true freshman. Uh, the redshirt freshman is actually uh, Jordan Black's cousin from Ware oh, County wow. in Georgia. And then the other young man is from right up the road here in uh, Myrtle Beach area. So was he able to provide any sort of scouting report? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think he knows it well enough. <laughs> well, that's fascinating. Uh, so we'll see which quarterback is up under center Saturday at 2 o'clock for uh, Furman. But, you know, looking at the numbers, regardless of which quarterback they've had out there, they do seem to run the football a lot. They've only thrown it, I think, on average 15 times a game, so a little bit more than you guys. But um, they certainly like to run the football, and they run it for more than 200 yards a game. So, you know, is this a team that – Offensively, they're kind of run first, or are they balanced? Yeah, they're definitely a run first yeah. team. That's what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to be a run oriented team. He's very a lot like a, like us. He's like myself. Um, he wants to be a pounded out, grounded out kind of a team, and uh, that's what was successful for him last year. They're extremely uh, successful at running the football. Had some good running backs. Had a great offensive line last year. Well coached football team. Uh, but it, it's the it's the big play pass game that'll watch out and that that'll sneak up and get you. They'll churn out some yards on the ground game, but it's the big play pass game that you got to watch out for. And uh, you, you already kind of touched on it, but it seems like a lot of that is built off of play action because of how much they use the run. And so uh, play action it seems to be a big part of that offense, um, which as a defense, I guess, you have to make sure that you stay uh, stay on your toes and, and don't get fooled. Huh? Yeah, you're defending the run. They've got play action off of everything, uh, the power game, the draw game, uh, the lead draw. You know, they've got the boot game off of it. They've got the, uh, the zone off the boot and uh, triple play action. They've got it all. I mean, we think we've got a lot of play action in. Uh, they, they, they probably double ours right now. And they, when looking at the numbers, they have two receivers 
wide receivers that have more than six catches, but they get a lot of different guys involved, whether it's the multiple running backs that they use. They have a couple of tight ends that they throw the football to. Uh, is that challenging for a defense to not only have to account for a lot of different guys, but when those guys are coming out of the backfield or off the line of scrimmage? Yeah, they, they, take, a, they take a similar approach to their personnel as we do. They have tight ends and wide receivers and A backs and slot backs and those mm -hmm. kind of things. Uh, and they're all interchangeable for those guys, and he mixes them around. And uh, after many years of watching Air Force, I, I can see where he gets it from. Air Force has done a lot of that as well, uh, just changing up their personnel and just doing some things differently. Uh, and when you have a tendency to play in the league over and over again like Air Force does and like we do, uh, you have a tendency to start to do that, start to look for different things to do against the league opponents all the time. Talking with the head coach, Brent Thompson, here of the Citadel Bulldogs on the Coaches Show. We have one more segment to go. We'll continue to dive deep into the matchup on Saturday with Furman for the Bulldogs as they strive for back-to-back -back conference victories. Uh, you can participate. We'll get to your questions next segment. Use hashtag uh, AskCoachThompson on Twitter, and we'll get to those when we come back here until 8 o'clock at the Marina Variety Store Restaurant at 17 Lockwood Drive. And when we come back, we'll wrap up uh, tonight's show by continuing to break down Saturday's game with Furman here at home for the Citadel. It's the Coaches Show with head coach Brent Thompson here on ESPN Radio, 94.7 FM and 9.10 AM. Pizza with Pepsi. Delicious. Buying a home is a big financial decision, so you need a strong team working on your mortgage. That team is at South Atlantic Bank. Decisions are made right here in our community by mortgage professionals who really know the low country. South Atlantic Bank offers competitive rates and terms on loans for home purchase or refinance. If you need a mortgage loan, you need the mortgage loan professionals at South Atlantic Bank. South Atlantic Bank Mortgage Group, providing the keys to home ownership. Try new Barbasol razors. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. What does first alert weather mean? It means you're connected. To the here, to the now. To big changes before they happen. From the everyday to the severe, you need a team that gives you the earliest alert. When we know, you'll know. Anywhere you are. Led by the most experienced meteorologist in the low country, Live 5 is your weather leader. Not because we want to be first, because your safety comes first. First alert weather, only from Live 5 News. Pizza with Pepsi. Delicious. The great thing about an old truck is you can treat it like an old truck, which is exactly why you got a truck in the first place. It's not old, it's broken in. So keep it running longer, stronger, with quality parts and a whole lot of Napa know-how. That's not going to buff out. TD Bank's new intern, Bart, is one of those robots from another bank. We're training him to bank human. Uh, uh, Bart, why are you winding the clock back? The clock stated 11.35 p.m., but they are still working. The clock is fine. Our live customer service is available all night, and all day for that matter. He's learning. At TD Bank, we do things differently. Hello? Like live customer service. Hello? 24-7. Don't just bank. Bank human. Pizza with Pepsi. Delicious. Style. Selection. Service. Quality. Value. See. 
what everyone is talking about. Ashley Furniture Home Store. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Buying a home is a big financial decision, so you need a strong team working on your mortgage. That team is at South Atlantic Bank. Decisions are made right here in our community by mortgage professionals who really know the low country. South Atlantic Bank offers Team Lockwood Drive in downtown Charleston. And you can still uh, send us questions online using the hashtag AskCoachThompson. We'll get them in here in the final segment before we wrap things up at the top of the hour and get ready for kickoff Saturday against Furman. Uh, Coach, just uh, learned during the commercial break you grew up a Mets fan in New York. Now it's the Red Sox Dodgers in the World Series. And I know as football coach, is always very busy. But uh, do you follow along with the MLB postseason at all? I haven't seen a baseball game in... Probably definitely over a couple of years. Wow. <laughs> I, I don't watch many many games. Yeah. I, I can watch an inning or two, mm -hmm. uh, but baseball for me, it's, it's just it doesn't move along quite <laughs> quite like I would like it to. Yeah. And uh, there certainly is a lot of uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of scheme and everything involved in it, but uh, just a much different sport for me. Yeah, absolutely. I know Coach Conti's Red Sox are in the World Series, um, so I've been talking about uh, talking Boston baseball with him. Hopefully, they don't disappoint Coach Conti here in the next couple of weeks. Um, but getting back to the game at hand Saturday uh, for the Citadel against Furman, first, before we dive back into the matchup, uh, somebody was asking online on uh, Twitter um, what specifically you're hoping to build off of in that win against VMI leading into another, another rivalry game Saturday with Furman. Well, it, just getting the win, you know, just figuring out a way to win the football game at the end of the day, uh, whether it was stopping a two-point conversion there that we didn't stop against Chattanooga, that's certainly a win for us. Um, being able to develop some of our younger guys, I thought we played fairly well at times on defense, and uh, I thought offensively we could build on the fact that we were uh, making some adjustments in, in a young offensive lineman that we've been um, – mostly sophomores right now, but we do have a redshirt freshman on the offensive line right now. And uh, we've got some guys up there that you know, need to make some more adjustments and, and need to have different games in there where they've got to do some different things. So we're excited about that. We're excited to be able to get out of there with a win and certainly go into a road game that we traveled eight or nine. And you're, uh, it's always not easy to uh, win a game that you're supposed to win in a hostile environment when it's a, uh, when it's a rivalry game. Mm -hmm. Those are hard, so hard situations to win. Absolutely. I meant to ask you earlier when we were talking about freshmen getting more involved and such, of course there's the rule that they can play four games, get the year back, and we've talked about that before, but let me ask you maybe a dumb question. Um, how is that kept track of? Is that uh, the coaches are kind of like an honest system? Well, a little bit of both is uh, if you ever get called out on it, you, you don't want to get called out mm -hmm. on it. You'd be playing an ineligible player for one. Uh, so we've got a running tally on who's played what and who's played at where. Um, John Brush, our, uh, our media guy, he takes care of a lot of that as well. He does a participation report that is kept track of. And uh, sometimes those things can be wrong, so we've got to make sure that they're accurate as football coaches. Uh, just, it's just keyboarding in a wrong number will we'll, we'll code a kid in that may not have ever played before. Uh, so we try to go through those every year at the end of the year and fix whatever we don't. Uh, but if you're, you know, obviously if there's a guy on film, everything's filmed and we've got right. a bunch of different angles on it between ESPN and, and our feed, uh, that if it ever was to come back, you, you certainly would know. <laughs> I'm just curious about that uh, aspect of the situation now that, as we talked earlier, some freshmen may be getting more playing time here the rest of the way and uh, still have the opportunity to get the year back. Uh, this game with Furman on Saturday, looking at uh, this matchup, well, it's part of Hall of Fame weekend. We have a Hall of Fame dinner Friday night, which um, I'll be at uh, emceeing at the, the hotel down the road. But, um, you know, I, I think when I talked to you earlier in the week, I, I accidentally said it was homecoming weekend. It's Hall of Fame weekend. But does that mean anything different for the, the football team Saturday to have, you know, some of the older players come back, watch the team? Does it add anything to the game Saturday? It's always good to see them. It's always good to have a little bit of that environment out there. Is uh, It's certainly neat to watch. Is, uh, when it gets down to about Friday, though, we, we kind of cut it all out and we go off campus and we just uh, try to stay as far away from everything as possible and try to focus as best we can. Looking at Furman, uh, they're coming off a loss against Sanford, but they had the special teams player of the week. Their field goal kicker had three field goals um, of over 50 yards in that game Saturday. He's missed a few extra points this year, so maybe not entirely accurate, but uh, certainly a strong arm or strong leg, I should say. As a coach, you know I don't know what you can do maybe to defend his uh, strong. Uh, 
kicking foot, but but that seems to be quite a weapon for them to be able to kick about 55-yard field goals. Yeah, you know, we thought we had a chance to have the special teams player of the week. We had a block, and uh, Sean Thomas Faulkner had a, not only the block, but he had the recovery in the next one. Uh, but then when I saw what he did, and, and he had three field goals that were pretty good distance there, uh, certainly was well-deserving of it. He is a tremendous weapon for them, not only in the uh, in the PATs and not only in the field goals, but also as the, uh, as the kickoff guy. He does a good job of placing the kickoffs. Does that change anything, how you call a game on the defensive side of things, knowing that their field goal range is a little bit longer than maybe a regular team? Yeah, you may want to try to get them into more of a uh, negative yard situation when you know that they're in field goal. You may take a little bit more chances when they know you're in field goal range. Third home game of the year, which is hard to believe because we're almost at Halloween and it's only the third home game. And you had an interesting comment in the press conference yesterday how it is hard to imagine or, or hard to realize that we're only at the halfway point. I agreed with you when you said it feels like it's been, you know, three quarters of the season. It feels a lot longer. So what has it been like for this team to only play two home games so far and go through uh, the first half of the season, which kind of feels like a full season so far? Yeah, you got to be careful of burnout, really, is uh, you got to mix in enough uh, enough work, but you, there are some times where you do have to back off a little bit, uh, only because you still have so much more of a season left to play that uh, you don't want to wear them out too much. We're going to play all the way through Thanksgiving this year, so uh, it'll be uh, it'll be uh, all we can do to kind of extend this thing all the way out, but it'll be very helpful for us as we're going to be able to uh, get some more practices in and, and do a little bit more than we have in the past. Yeah, hard to believe it's still five games left on the schedule, and so an opportunity for the Bulldogs to finish the year uh, over 500 and get a couple more wins here in conference play with just the third home game coming up on Saturday. So hopefully everyone can come out and join us because they haven't had many opportunities to cheer uh, at Johnson Haygood Stadium here in 2018 so far. Uh, how's the health of the team heading into this game with Furman? We're fairly healthy. We are, you know, we've got a couple of guys that are working their way back from uh, you know ankles and knees a little bit, but uh, I think a couple of them should be able to play through. It. Uh, we'll certainly be missing still about two or three guys. Winding down the final uh, minutes here of tonight's program, getting ready for the game Saturday with Furman for the Bulldogs. Two o'clock kickoff. Coverage will begin at noon on the radio locally. What are some keys to the game for, for you and your Bulldogs to get out of there with uh, a second straight rivalry victory? I just went on defense. We've got to uh, watch the big play action pass. Our safeties and corners have got to get their eyes in the right spot. We can't uh, we can't get fooled. We can't get crossed up over there. We're going to uh, do our fair share of supporting out of our secondary, but we've got to make sure that uh, we're on the right keys and we're on the right guys. Uh, let our front guys handle the run and, and make sure that we stop the run. As if we stop the run, I think we'll have a pretty good chance in the day. Uh, however, on defense is, uh, I assume on the offensive side of their defense, uh, like I told you, we've got to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. Is there's no two ways around on this thing is that we've gone against Coach Staggs and these guys. Um, we've made our fair share of mistakes. We can't make mistakes against them. They get compounded against them. Um, he knows what he's doing right there. Is sometimes you just got to line up and play football and uh, just trying to drive the football and move it. It may be one of those days where you're just doing all that you can do to get three and a half, four yards of drive. Got about 90 seconds left with you here tonight. Um, when we talked last week, you know, we know the season didn't get off to the start you were looking for, but a win this past Saturday against VMI, if you get a win Saturday against Furman, not only for the record with a, a better record, a 3-4 and four record, but also the wins against those certain programs. Does that help get things rolling here? On Certainly. The it, it goes a long way. It goes a long way for the rest of the season as well. It'll go a long way in the, into the off season right now, but um, and just making us feel better about, you know, certainly last year and about the last couple of weeks. I'm sure the, the guys are excited to get back out. As we said, only the third home game. I'm sure they're looking forward to playing in front of the home crowd again. Well, I know I am, and uh, you know, you take a look at these guys. I think they've played five of seven on at home, mm -hmm. uh, so they've got a back end stretch where they're going to be on the road a little bit more. Uh, we've kind of staggered these things quite, you know, spread out quite a bit. Uh, these home games, and we're spreading them out a little bit further beyond Thanksgiving this year. So uh, that's what makes it feel a little bit longer is when you're going on the road every other week, uh, and you haven't had easy trips trips to Towson and trips to VMI uh, sprinkled in there, and a four and a half hour trip to Mercer doesn't uh, doesn't help either. So uh, we're looking forward to getting back home. We're looking forward to get into some easier trips down the road. Absolutely, and it's been this rotation now, one home, one on the road for the second half of the season, which uh, certainly helps. Uh, well, Coach uh, Furman, 
It's 2 o'clock on Saturday coming into Johnson Haygood Stadium. Should be a, another excellent game uh, to come out and support the Bulldogs. Join us at Johnson Haygood Stadium. But as always, Coach, appreciate your time and your honesty and the answers tonight, and we wish you the best of luck Saturday. Thanks, Luke. I appreciate it, and I'll see you out there. Absolutely. That's the head coach, Brent Thompson, as we wind things down here from the Marina Variety Restaurant. Uh, at 17 Lockwood Drive. Just want to remind you, you can come join us every Wednesday night here on the Coach's Show from the Marina Variety Restaurant uh, at uh, 17 Lockwood Drive in downtown Charleston, right down the road from the university. And um, great seafood, great views, talking Bulldogs football on Wednesday nights. We'll be here every Wednesday throughout the football season, including, of course, next Wednesday following the game Saturday against Furman. Come out and join us 2 o'clock kick Saturday at Johnson Haygood Stadium as part of a Hall of Fame weekend for the Citadel. And if you can't make it to the game, if you're out of the area, turn it on the radio or online. It will be carried locally here in Charleston with coverage beginning at noon on 1021 FM, 921 FM, and 1450 AM. 2 o'clock kickoff on Saturday. Coverage will begin at noon for the Bulldogs and Furman. For the head coach, Brent Thompson, I'm Luke Morrow, wishing you a happy rest of your Wednesday night. We'll see you Saturday. Go Bulldogs. Go